You hear that? You know what that sound is? That's the sound of progress, my friend. In this episode of sparsely published videos of my odd antics, I put on a glove, look at a lot of numbers with tables, and push a button. Stay tuned. So today we are going to be building a device capable of making random numbers. Look, trust me, it's not as boring as it sounds, alright? It's got a spicy element to it that I'll reveal later. But first, let me take you back to my studies at university. We were assigned to write a thesis on a topic relating to video games. I struggled to find a good topic and was sitting in front of one of my assignments watching a bunch of asteroids flying around, then suddenly said entropy out loud. And then my friend repeated the word entropy. And then we just started chanting it entropy, like maniacs. Entropy, 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 entropy. It was at that moment that we decided to team up and write a paper on making a true random number generator for games. This led us on a journey to find a source of entropy we could actually afford that required us to find a seller, learn physics, talk a bunch with the ethics committee of the institution, contact the government, all for everything to be approved, and then the ethics committee finding some weird, obscure rule that prevented us from making a physical device. But we still wrote a paper on it, which if you're interested can be downloaded from the link in the description. This may be a good time to mention that this is private research based on the paper I wrote and is not affiliated with the institution I was studying at in any way, shape or form. Anyway, let's get to building this thing. Oh, and uh, don't, don't try this at home. Seriously. Right. So, Henry's got a box. Now you might be wondering, what's behind box number one? Well, I've got a oversized lever opener that we can use to find out. Yeah. Come on. Look at that. A suspicious looking suitcase. And so, we are left with the suspicious suitcase. I wonder what horrors lie within. Comes with uh, some keys, that's kind of cool. Look at that, it's a big one. A couple of hinges, power cable, battery. Very nice. A mysterious foam enclosed device. Mm. The mystery continues. A couple of zany wacky adapters. Probably the smallest screen I've ever seen. You know what? Why stop there? Two tiny screens. PCB prototype board. A button. A buzzer. Click. Beep boop bop. Hello, yes it's pizza guy. A mysterious box. Ooh, wonder what's in that. And a bunch of components on a board with a tube. And an... Alright, let's get started. Right, so the idea is to get the Arduino to... <laughs> Great, the one thing I didn't buy for this video. <sighs> My whiteboard markers are dry. Don't really want to go to the store though. Ah, much better. Let's get started. Hold on to your hats because it's boring time. So, we are going to be using radiation in this video. So again, don't try this at home. To give you a quick crash course, radioactive material radiates alpha and beta particles, as well as gamma rays. The more it radiates, the more radioactive it is, basically. Which brings us to Geiger tubes, a tube filled with a special gas and a thin wire that uses a chain reaction to detect radiation. To demonstrate how they work, let's use an example. Let's say you have an alpha particle and it hits a gas molecule inside the tube. That gas molecule gets charged, which hits another gas molecule. It hits another one and another one and another one, charging each one until it hits the wire, generating a current. By measuring the current, we can get a count value. Using this count value, we can then convert it to a measurement of radiation like SV per hour. Next up, computers. 
Computers do everything with ones and zeros. This system is known as binary and can be used to represent numbers. Each one or zero is a bit and a group of four bits is called a byte. So for example, byte 1101 is equal to 13. The way it works is you just have to imagine that each number is in a column. Starting from one and going right, the next one would be two, then four, then eight, and so on and so forth. All you need to do to convert from binary to a number is add the column numbers that have a one. So in this example, eight plus four plus one, which of course makes 13. So now it's time for the plan. We will take radiation and use a Geiger tube to measure the radiation. We then plug that into an Arduino that will then take this measurement and convert it into a number using binary. We will then, we want a large number, so probably like 31 bits, let's just say. Then we take this output, throw it at a computer, which then takes our input to a program that is running on the computer. And then this program will generate random numbers that we got from the radiation, which will do all sorts of things like, uh, I don't know, picking lunch, let's say. So a cool side note here is that computers can't actually generate truly random numbers um, without help. Currently they need like real world input, uh, so like lava lamps or mouse movement or even quantum physics, uh, that exists. And since we are generating numbers from radiation, which uh, decay events aren't actually predictable in terms of when they will actually occur exactly, means that we are actually generating truly random numbers as well. <laughs> so that's actually kind of cool. Anyway, that's the plan. Enough rambling. Let's go build something. Right, so this is the prototype so far. It's pretty simple. We just got a Geiger counter. We got the that feeding into this little display, and you can see the ones and zeros. Um, they're kind of generating. We'll get back to that. We also got a fingerprint reader and a keypad. All right, and if I zoom in on here, so right now you can see it's generating a number, and it's uh, relying on background radiation, which is kind of slow. So anyway, I've got this mystery box. If I open this mysterious box, you will notice there is another mysterious container. The more observant of you may have noticed this non-descriptive radioactive sticker on it. Don't worry about that, that becomes important later. But before we can continue, I gotta slip into something more comfortable. This is me putting on a suit. I couldn't find any good music, so I'm making it up. If we open this container, you will find rocks. You'll also find that these rocks slightly glint in the light, which is interesting. So, these rocks are something called uraniumite, which is a radioactive ore that contains uranium, therium, and radium, as well as a few other things. What does that all mean? Well, it means I can do this. And now you see, ladies and gentlemen, we have solved the problem of having to wait for the radiation. Because now there's always radiation. Right, so this is a working prototype, so I'm going to package this back up. And we're going to continue building the prototype.
the idea is to kind of just recreate what these do. They board with pins on it and you just plug it straight into the Arduino. And there you go, it just fits nice and snug like that. So we're gonna try recreate that with this, this, and these. And hopefully it all works. Now we should be able to do this. I want to go down on this side for some reason. Oh. Great. Amazing. The board doesn't fit this. It's so close, yet it's so far. Like, look at it. The, the front pin's there, are just fine, but then <laughs> as soon as the gap's been made, it just doesn't connect. <sighs> Let this be a lesson. Why you don't buy Chinese knockoffs, alright? They always miss something. And it's really annoying when they do. Fixed. And now you see, when I plug it in, it actually fits. See? Look at that. Right, some more disaster. <laughs> I tried, uh soldering the board together that wasn't strong enough so then i tried using uh super glue um so that's fine we're just gonna move on all right <laughs> Alright, so here's the finished panel as you can see it's a little bit rough around the edges the idea is that we're gonna have hinges on these uh, screw holes so that I can lift the panel up like this to access the components underneath. So we've got our hinges here, it's pretty neat. Now, it wouldn't be one of my videos unless something went wrong. All right, and the thing that went wrong was I've lost the screws for these. But not to fear, aha, for I have a solution and no, it's not zip ties. All right, all right. We're not we're not bringing those out just yet. Childhood Meccano to the rescue. Huh. You know, it's, uh, it's actually uh, working pretty well. In fact, it's um, starting to make the project look semi competently built. We can't have any of that. Uh, Time to bust out the pink hot glue gun. Right, so I've uh, rerouted the wires and I can actually close the box now. Bit messy, but most of everything's down so over here we got a battery, uranium, bugger counter, a bunch of stuff, close the lid and now boom it all turns on and put this and yep, that turns on as well right so we have a small problem see we can write this program successfully and verify it but Yeah, but if I get rid of all of this data just here... There we go, it starts up normally. No issues. So, that's funny because the little image I made doesn't exceed the Arduino specifications for storage. But it's a Chinese knockoff! So who knows what's in there? So I think I hit the limit. <laughs> oh no, we're gonna have to cut down on a few things. So after a lot of work, here it is. I present the TRNG food machine. So how does it work? Well first, you press the power button here. 
Then you wait for the device to boot up. Don't worry about that sound. Right, once it's ready, you have to arm the device. So, following the on-screen instructions, we can see that we need a key. So, this is pretty simple. Put the key in here, turn it. Right, so now it's waiting for a fingerprint, so if I just give it one, you'll see that now we're at the main menu. So the last step to arm the device is to flick the switch. And now the device is fully armed and ready to go. So the next step is to decide what mode we want to use. We'll start with standalone mode. So we just hit B for that, and you can see we now have TRNG range. This will generate a random number from a range. So for example, let's say the starting number is 1, and let's say the end number is 20. And now you'll see if we generate a new number, we have a D20. Every time I hit new number, as long as the uranium's generated some, which uh, it really is because it's gone past my uh, little analog animation thing here. <laughs> yeah, bye bye, needle. Um, you can see we get a new number between 0 and 20. Perfect for your D&D games. There is also another mode called Serial Mode, which then generates numbers for a computer to use. Welcome back. This is not the lockpicking lawyer, and today in front of us we have a cheap AliExpress lock I found. Now, normally I would unlock it using my key, like so. However, say I forgot my key and it went missing. Well, never fear, because with just a simple hairpin, you can actually unlock this lock just fine, as if you had the key. So, what we do is we put the hairpin in, move it back like that, and turn. It's as simple as that, folks. <laughs> Honestly, why can I open this with a fucking hairpin? <laughs> oh. And let us not forget, if we want to lock it up, just do the exact same in reverse. <laughs> Can't believe that works. Honestly. Oh. Right, it's the next day, and as you can see, we're generating numbers. It's uh, actually uh, generating them a little bit faster than I thought. Um, in fact, we've already got uh, 13 numbers in a queue, um, and that number's just been ticking up. Anyway, so if we push this button, we can find out what we're having lunch. The coffee club, Pukekoe. All right, guess we're going to the coffee club. What's up guys? Welcome to Henry's Food Reviews. Nah, no, but actually, uh, <laughs> that device worked. I mean, I didn't know we even had a coffee club in my area. Oh, yeah, it was quite, quite a good meal. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you later. Bye. One on, on the right. Yeah, what about this? Change that to a division or something. I'm gonna change this to a division. I can't change that to the division. Well, you have a multiply symbol. Yeah. Maybe you don't. <laughs> okay, and how am I gonna do that? You gotta click on the star and delete it, and then write a slash. Why would that? That's not gonna give me that tug. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> okay, as, as 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 you were saying. 